Thank you, Zarifa. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think we all would agree that it is no longer in use to say that the that what we are witnessing in the United States, mainly in Washington, relevant to Palestine, is unprecedented. We are seeing the tide shifting, and we are seeing more support for Palestinian rights across the United States unfolding before our own eyes in real time, including in, in Capitol Hill. So it is no longer a political or it's no longer political suicide to be pro-Palestinian rights. We've seen this. We've seen members of Congress who are speaking on behalf of the Palestinians, on behalf of their rights, who are condemning the aggression on the Palestinian people by, by the state of Israel, who are calling Israel for what it is, who are calling out Israel for its crimes without worrying about the repercussions. That tells you that is that there is a real change in this country and that people are becoming more aware of the facts. And if I would say, if I would explain why is this happening now, I would say it is because A, of the sacrifice, the steadfastness, the resolute of the Palestinian people. They refuse to go away and they refuse to abandon their rights and they refuse to be defeated and to be compelled to declare or to raise the white flag. They continue to say that we're Palestinians and they continue to stand tall on their land and they continue to defend for their civil rights, religious rights, for their human rights. We've seen them in Jerusalem. We've seen them in the West Bank. We've seen them inside the state of Israel today, demanding justice and equality and demanding human rights. And we've seen them in the Gaza Strip, where the Palestinian people have been, or more than 2 million people have been now under a cruel blockade for over 15 years and they still refuse to cut and run and say that we longer want to be in this small strip of land where we're blockaded where our movement is restricted where we're being bombed on daily basis so they're still standing tall on their land and they still demand their rights and they are inspiring the entire world to stand for their rights and for their human for their human rights and for their independence and what they deserve to be treated no less than any human being, no more than any human being. So that is the first reason why we're seeing this shift here in the United States and across the world. The second reason is because of our collective work. It is because of the organizing that we're doing. It is because of the mobilization that we're doing. It is because of the awareness that we're raising. Now we see that this work is paying dividends. So I want everyone to believe that this is not happening in a vacuum. It is happening for a reason. It is because we are more assertive. It is because we are speaking out. It is because we are providing a voice to the voiceless. We are amplifying their rights and we're amplifying their plot and we're amplifying their cause it is because of that it is because of that and as we cannot disconnect the, the, as we cannot um, you know marginalize the work of the palestinian people and their steadfastness we cannot marginalize the importance of our work here in america and across the world so these are the two reasons why we're seeing this shift in 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 america and these new dynamics in the united states in relation to the palestinian rights however I don't want us to um, resign to a self-congratulatory uh, 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 mentality where we self-congratulate ourselves because of what we have achieved so far. I don't want us to think that this is the end of the world. I don't want us to think that what we've done is enough. It is not enough. We still have a long way ahead of us. We have a bigger potential to fulfill and that we can fulfill. All what we have to do is to believe that we 
that there is something more that we can do for Palestine. What we have done so far is very good, but it is not enough. I assure you that there is much more that can be done. I often hear um, uh, dispirited uh, people say, uh, how long is it going to take until we have a meaningful change in America in relation to Palestine? Well, let me tell you how long it's going to take. It's not going to take much more than you abandoning this frustration, frustrated mentality, that this dependent mentality, this uh, uh, you know defeated mentality. Once you change, once you depart from this mentality, once you start believing in what you can achieve, I assure you that the road and this this journey will be much, much, much shorter than what we anticipate. But we have to start with this to believe in our abilities, to believe in what we can do, to believe in our potential, to believe that we have the resources, that we have the talent, that we have the commitment, and we are standing on the right side of history. Our cause is just, our cause is just, you don't have to spend a lot of money to convince people about, about the justness of the, of the Palestinian cause. You don't have to spend a lot of money or to invent um, you know, facts or alternative facts or to come up with alternative facts to explain what the Palestinian people are going through and what the Palestinian people are standing for and what we are struggling for here in relation for uh, of, of their rights. So let us believe in ourselves. That's number one. Let us believe in ourselves. Let us believe in our potential. Let us believe in our abilities. Let us believe in our capa ca capabilities. We do have the capacity. We do have the capacity to do more for Palestine. As Sister Linda just explained, you know, it doesn't make any sense that the other side, that our opponents who know that they're defending a, a, a cruel regime, who are defending an apartheid state, who are defending a state that is defy that that defy that defies international international law, that subjugates people, a state that has has two two or three or four levels of citizenship still they're putting more resources to advance the cause of the state of israel the apartheid state of israel while we are still discussing and still debating whether our work will pay off or not let me assure you again that it is paying off just look around you just let just look at these new dynamics that we see unfolding before our eyes it's unfolding in real time. In real time, we're not reading back in history about what happened back in history. We are seeing it happening now. So let us believe in our potential. Let us believe in our abilities. Let us believe in our cap capabilities because I assure you, we can do more and more and more for our brothers and sisters in Palestine, for the oppressed people of, in Palestine. Two, let us invest right and execute immediately. So once we believe in ourselves, once we believe in ourselves, once we believe in our ability, once we believe in our capabilities, let us start investing right. We know how to invest. We know what, what needs to be done here in America. We have organizations that are advocating for the Palestinian rights. We have organizations that are providing us with blueprints of what needs to be done. We have organizations and we have leaders and 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 experienced individuals and experienced professionals who are telling us, you know, you want to do this, this is what you do. One, two, three, four. So we have we have the blueprint if we want to execute a plan. And I assure you that this plan does exist. All what you need is to look for it. And it you don't need to look far. Just go to our website as AMP, go to other organizations' website. We're not alone in this fight. I do want to, you know, um, uh, uh, give an impression that uh, the, the that AMP has exclusivity over the work of Palestine. We are an organization out of money, uh, out of many. We are one organization in a broad solidarity movement for Palestine, a, 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 an intersectional solidarity movement in Palestine. Sister Linda again touched on the issue of anti-Semitism. You know, we have so many Jewish comrade, comrades. We have so many Jewish friends, so many Jewish brothers and sisters here in America who are fighting with us for justice in Palestine. They deserve nothing but respect. 
they deserve nothing but admiration because that moral courage is what is needed. And let me, let me emphasize this fact. The moral courage that they're showing, that they're exhibiting, is much, it's, it's, it's much bigger than the moral courage that many of us Palestinians are showing here in America. When we sit on our butts, we continue to analyze the situation, overanalyze the situation, reanalyze the situation, and shedding tears and condemning the oppressor without doing anything about stopping his oppression. So I would tell you, anyone who stands in solidarity with any just cause is much better than many of those who are sitting doing nothing. So they deserve our respect and they deserve to know that for us, it is not about Judaism. It is not about being, being Jewish. They, they need to see that we understand that it is about oppression. And I always keep saying this, I keep always emphasizing this fact. I am a Palestinian. I am a Arab, Arabi, Arab. I am Muslim and I stand against regimes that claim to speak for Islam and Muslims like Saudi Arabia and UAE, who are no less oppressors than the state of Israel. It is not about their religion. It is not about the religion of the oppressor or the identity of the oppressor or the religion or the identity of the oppressed. It is about the act itself. It is about the oppression itself. So I want us all, not only to respect them, but to join hands in, with, in hands with them and standing together to continue to, adv to advance and to broader this, uh, broaden this movement for Palestine. So there, this is the second point that I wanted to make. Let us invest, right? Let us execute immediately. I have heard so many times, so many people coming to me and saying, how long is this going to take? As I said before, once we abandon this dependent mentality, let us start executing immediately. Things that we could have accomplished 20 years ago, we are starting today. And if we continue with this mentality, prolonging the dis discussions, endless debates, it will take us another 20 years to start from the point of this point that we're in now. So this is the second point. The third point, I want you to believe in the justness of the cause of Palestine. And if you are a person of faith, I want you to believe that the Almighty will not let us down because we are doing the right thing. The Almighty will not let us down. Don't worry about how much resources the other side has. Don't worry about how much support they enjoy, political support they enjoy in Capitol Hill. That's not how you judge a situation. Look about who's standing on the right side of history. Look about what you need to worry about. Are you doing the right thing? If you are, trust me, there is no noble idea that has won without determined people. And there is no noble idea that was, that was not in a disadvantaged position. You know, all of these great ideas that we see, all of these social justice movements that we are, you know, following today, they have started from a point of disadvantage, of disadvantage, but they were able to change the situation. They were able to shift the tide because what they're fighting for deserves, deserves the sacrifice. And their commitment and resilience pays or paid dividends. And if we believe in the same, if, if we believe the same, that we, we are fighting for a just cause and we have the right, you know, um, the, 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 the solid commitment, the firm commitment, I assure you, things will change quickly, quicker than what many of us might think. Things are changing now. Things can change more and in a faster pace. Just trust that you can do this and invest right. Let me, let me conclude by saying this. We're all proud of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. I think they have made the entire world respect them. They've seen them in the West Bank standing before Israeli tanks um, with no weapons, just uh, civilians going into the, taking into the streets, protesting the Israeli brutality. 
they've seen them in the Aqsa Mosque and in Jerusalem and in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood and in uh, Al Bustan neighborhood in Silwan. They've seen them refusing to leave their homes, Re regardless of what the other side is doing to them, the way it's uh, Israel is brutalizing them, is terrorizing them. They earn the respect of the world. They've seen them in Gaza with this massive Israeli onslaught, destroying residential towers, destroying residential units, devastating the infrastructure there, tightening the blockade on the people of Gaza. They've seen that the day after cease, the ceasefire, people went back to the streets, resumed their lives. It doesn't mean that they're not in pain. It doesn't mean that they're not missing a beloved one. It doesn't mean that they have a roof to sit under. But it is that resilient. It is that spirit. It is that spirit that teaches the world what it means, what it means to be on the right side of history. For them, there is nothing that they could have done to avoid this brutality being inflicted on them upon them it is not something that they solicited it is not something that they called for and don't listen to these corrupt politicians don't listen to our uh, immoral president who who accused an exonerated israel from responsibility and blamed the arab regimes for not recognizing israel as an independent as he put it independent jewish state for the massacre that israel is committing as if Israel needs independence, as, as if Israel needs the recognition of Arab and the Palestinians. Israel is in the, in, an independent state. Israel is a state that is recognized, including by, by many corrupted Arab regimes today. It is the Palestinians who don't have a state of their own. It is the Palestinians who are denied self-determination. It is the Palestinians who are, who are being murdered days and nights. It is the Palestinians who are being prevented from experience of uh, practicing their freedom of religion it is the palestinians who are being denied the right of movement and their movement is being restricted it is the palestinians who can't see a future it is the palestinians who have been deceived by the international community for decades and decades it is the palestinians who were told that engage in negotiations with israel and accept the right of israel to exist exist and protect israel's security and Israel's security, and you will enjoy a state of your own. It's been more than over more than over than 30 years now, and the Palestinians have seen nothing in return. For our president to accuse the Palestinians and Arabs for the crimes that are being inflicted on them by the state of Israel is immoral, and, and this is the least to say. This is the least to say. But you know what? At the end of the day, he's doing what he thinks is right. And we will do what we think is right. And what we think is right is that we will be more assertive and we will make sure that all of our politicians, all of those elected officials, that our own government will hear from us and that we will hold them accountable and that we will continue to raise awareness and that we will continue to broaden this movement. Now more people are are becoming more sympathetic to Palestine. More Americans are more aware of the facts. More Americans are demanding, uh, uh, you know, an even-handed approach, a more balanced approach towards towards the the the, the conflict uh, in 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 the land of Palestine. So more people are 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 becoming more assertive today. Let us worry about what we can do. Let us stop complaining about what the other side is doing. What the other side is doing is what they think is right. Let us do what we think is right. Let us stop obsessing about the resources that they have, the support that they enjoy. Let us broaden. Let us expand our support. Let us make sure that we compete with them head to head. If they believe what, in what they're doing, we are no less firm in our faith, in our rights. Let us do our part. Let us do our part. Stop condemning them for doing what they believe is right. If you think what they're doing is wicked, do what is right. Come to organizations like ours. Make our brothers and sisters in Palestine proud of us as we are proud of them. 
It is not enough to say we commend you for your sacrifice. We commend you for your steadfastness. We commend you for your resolve. It is not enough to say this to them. It means nothing. What means something to them is to see us that we're doing our part here in America, doing our max, our utmost to help them. That's what they expect from us. It is, you know, policies are being made here. Ceasefire, the ceasefire wasn't imposed until this administration and this president start feeling the heat by the progressives, the progressive wing in his party. It is when Cong when, when Congress members like our great Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and 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 many others, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and and Carson and many other members of Congress, Betty McCollum and others and others came together and centered Palestinian rights and sent a clear message to this president. It is not enough to pay lip service about centering human rights in your foreign policy. It is not enough if paying lip service of re restoring, uh, restoring, as he's put it, America's moral authority. America, America's moral authority means nothing, means nothing if it doesn't apply to the Palestinian people. So let's do our part. They're hearing our voices now. And our voices are getting louder. And our work is getting is becoming more effective. I want you to believe in this. I want you to believe that there is a way, for, a way forward. I want you to believe that we can do more. I want you to believe that in a few years from now, you will see a whole different picture, a whole different dynamics of what we have seen so far and made us happy. I want you to believe in this. If now, if we're seeing now resolutions being introduced in Congress to hold Israel accountable or to hold off on, on uh, ammunition and military aid to Israel or to condemn Israel for the crimes it commits or to condition military aid to Israel based on the apartheid regime that it's, it's uh, enforcing on the Palestinian people. If we are happy with this, I want you to believe that in a few years from now, we might be getting the support of, of the majority of a majority within Congress, within the House or maybe and maybe the Senate to implement these policies and to implement these resolutions. We're getting there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being over optimistic. I'm not being delusional. I know if we do our part, if we do it right, things will change. Things will change. Our people in Palestine are expecting no less from us. They're expecting no less from us. So let us come together. Let us continue this fight for justice in Palestine, freedom, equality. And when I say freedom, equality, I mean it for all. For all. We're not in the business of exclusion. We're not advocating for uh, another apartheid system to replace the existing one. That's not what we're advocating for. We advocate for justice, freedom, equality for all. As we advocate for these values here in America, we are advocating for these values in Palestine and in, in every part of the world. That's what we stand for. Believe in yourself, believe in our potential, invest right, execute immediately, and believe in the justness of our cause and the inevitability that things will change very soon, inshallah. Change to the better. Things will change. Wassalamu alaikum.